And now the problem is black pieces are developed, but there there's no active place to use them. You know, there's no there's no way to increase their activity rapidly. So black's kind of at a loss as to what to do here. So black just plays g6, which is for the most part a, a defensive type move. But uh, it comes it will soon come to grief to white's white plays h4. White says, I don't even need the castle. I'm just going to mate you on the H file. White is set basically saying to Black, I'm going to play H5, trade, Queen H3, and mate. And at this point, Black is, uh, I would I would suspect, Black is really realizing <laughs> things are not going his way. Trades on E5. White takes with the F pawn. That's the, the recapture we almost always see increasing the, the strength of the attack on the F-file. This is an example of how not to play with for black. And black plays knight e4, and this is an attempt to be clever. If white takes on e4, then the material quality is reestablished. If white plays knight takes e4, black trades everything and then plays bishop takes h4, and uh, has some chances for survival there. White simply plays g5, and g5 introduces a monster grip on the position on the king side. Black is uh, really without moves here, no, without space, without mobility, without moves. What a beautiful game by White. You know, it's one of those things. You can't really say that Black has made horrific blunders, but uh, he's, he's utterly lost here. So black trades. He's afraid of losing a pawn. That's very reasonable fear. And now black plays a5. He's trying to hunt down one of white's monster minor pieces. But it's too little, too slow, too late. <laughs> white displays queen g4, which is... White is gradually inching the queen towards the h-file. Black plays queen d7. And of course... The queen is observing the pawn on e6, so that if the f-pawn were to move, of course it's almost impossible to move it anyway, but uh, the queen is also n nicely observing e6. And now here comes h5, and I should have pointed out the queen also guards the pawn on g5, so allowing h5 to be played. This, this is what we could truly call a nightmare position for, for black. He's he hasn't made any outright blunders or tact or loss of material, yet he's he simply lost. White never even had the castle. So black offers an exchange of White's best uh, the best minor piece on the board, and of course White plays Bishop C two. Now black tries to gain some activity. You know he, now the queen comes out, knight threatening, queen takes B two, which isn't really not much of a threat. White just plays rook b1. So now white plays pawn takes h6, and now we see the beauty of the of the queen move on g4. The observation at the e6 point is absolutely crucial and is discouraging the f-pawn recapture, although that's forced. <laughs> the f-pawn recapture is forced, uh, and then white would simply castle and play queen h4, I would play castle, queen h4, and mate. So that's pretty discouraging for black. So black has to try something else by process of elimination. And of course, remember the the queen on g4 is also doing a nice duty of preventing a mate on e2. So the queen on g4 is, is a very useful piece. And now white says, now that I've weakened your pawn structure and forced you to recapture with the f pawn, now is the time to castle. And that eliminates the mating threat and yet retains the threat of queen e6 or rook h7. So basically black is utterly crushed here. Black plays what must be the best move, he rushes the queen back to the the, uh, the most important part of the board. But now we, t we see a, uh, a brilliant 
but obvious sacrifice. Rook takes h7. Opposite side castling open files are of paramount importance. And capturing is, uh, there's not really any choice. White's ready to, to double or triple even. But white has an obvious w win with a queen encroachment. Now if king g7, white just plays uh, queen h6. Easy, easy uh, move to find. So white plays king g8. Bishop takes, this is what we call a destructive sacrifice. Uh, the, the pawn barrier uh, has been completely eliminated by uh, the sacrifice there. Black plays the only move to, one could even consider. And now we see rook h1, and now at this point black resigns because he's facing unstoppable mate on h8. Uh, if the king comes up, he still gets mated in the same fashion. There's probably other ways to do it, too, but uh, that's one way to do it. So after rook h1, uh, black tips his king over. So this very one-sided game, uh, white didn't even have to, you know, have any really have any serious worries whatsoever. He made obvious developing moves, and with this stonewall attack, the stonewall pawn formation, uh, he achieved an easy victory with the kingside attack. So this is uh, the stonewall attack, part one. Obviously, this is not the best way for black to meet the stonewall. <laughs> the, uh, as I teach my students, there are several ways to counteract the stonewall, but uh, those, will, those will be the subject of future lectures. But uh, primarily, you can either go for a fianchetto situation for, for black, or you can make some kind of attempt to exchange off the, the uh, powerhouse on d3. Either, either get the bishop out early to f5 or g4. Uh, in other words, don't play e6 and d5 too early. Uh, get the bishop out, the black bishop, I'm talking from black's point of view, the black could activate the bishop by bringing it out to f5 or g4, thus uh, having some chance of trading off the powerhouse on d3, or maybe even b6 and then bishop a6 to trade off the powerhouse on d3. But obviously a fiasco like, the, like we're, we're looking at right here is not what black wants uh, in, in any way, shape, or form, and uh, must be avoided. <laughs> Uh, so there's there's a couple ways to to do better than this, but it's re it's kind of remarkable that black doesn't make any uh, black's not making any horrendous blunders. He's just playing normal developing moves, and then uh, then suddenly he's utterly lost, and uh, that's what can happen in the Stonewall. Thank you very much, and uh, that concludes our lecture today. And I I appreciate your listening and look forward to see you next week. Thank you very much.